It's time for a deep dive on University of Portland basketball. The inside story on the Pilots. This is Portland Pilots Basketball with Coach Eric Reveno. Tonight's show is brought to you on 910 ESPN Portland by employee-owned Bymart, by your local Les Schwab Tire Center, the Oregon College Savings Plan, by Buffalo Wild Wings, U.S. Bank, by Safeway, and by Play Smart Health Screenings from Providence Heart and Vascular Institute. Now here's your host, Jason Bro. Good evening, Portland Pilots fans. You're listening to The Coach's Show with Coach Eric Reveno here on 910 ESPN Portland. Jason Bro in studio. We're going to have Coach Reveno on here starting in segment two for a couple of segments. We're going to give a medley of, of different interviews uh, throughout this segment. We'll have uh, potentially Bryce Presley, Alec Wintering, uh, Director of Basketball Operations Kramer Knutson, who's kind of handling all of our producing logistics from down in San Francisco, and then uh, Athletic Director Scott Lakeham will come on for the last segment or two. We're, we're scrambling a little bit as the uh, pilot men's basketball team, as many people are aware, traveled already down to San Francisco over this holiday season after Christmas. They are down there. Their practice time got changed uh, coincidentally right when we went on the air today. So they are now pr- at the War Memorial Gym practicing. Um, so we're going to get coach and some players and some support staff in and out and around that practice as they're preparing for Thursday night's West Coast Conference road game, a 5 p.m tip at the University of San Francisco. A lot of exciting things to talk about this show, though. Um, And and as mentioned, if anybody wants to interact with us, our phone lines are going to be down for um, this show in particular, just because of the logistical coordination we are doing um, with Coach. Uh, back down in San Francisco, but you can always tweet us questions using hashtag AskCoachRev or visit the Portland Pilots website. Visit PortlandPilots.com backslash AskCoachRev, and there is form fields to fill out. We'll get to Coach here shortly. But a recap, we didn't have a Coach's show last week uh, as the Pilots were playing LMU, and it turned out to be a good time to miss the show as the Pilots rattled off a big victory over LMU to open West Coast Conference play, followed that up with a nice uh, wire-to-wire victory over the Pepper. Pepperdine Waves on Wednesday to go into the holiday break 2-0 in West Coast Conference play. Um, the Pilots before that, uh, four games in six days, two games as co-host of the Far West Classic at the Moda Center with Oregon State. Hard luck loss on the previous Friday. Um, previous Friday to Weber State, giving up a late three-pointer, losing in overtime, and then coming back to beat Cal State Fullerton. So the Pilots head in to San Francisco Um with a three-match win streak, three-game win streak. So Coach Reveno is on the line, I believe, and ready for us. If we can go to him, we'll get him on shortly to talk about those uh, that good start to West Coast Conference play. Alec Wintering also earned West Coast Conference Player of the Week honors, the first pilot this year to earn those honors. So we'll hopefully, hopefully get a chance to talk to Al. And do we have Coach Jesse? I'm I'm here, brother. Hey, what, how's it going, Coach? Good, good to get you on. We've been working through all kinds of fun logistical stuff, <laughs> but we got you. Good to hear you. First of all, Merry Christmas to you and your family. And just how's the team uh, been able to regroup down there and, and getting all the back together in San Francisco? We're all present and accounted for, except Jarrell just jumped in a cab at SFO heading over to UNSF. So other than that, we're good. <laughs> but uh, I. I imagine the team morale is great. I mean, you you probably couldn't have asked for a better way to go into the holidays. Um, you know, you you pick up the back end of the Far West Classic, and then uh, probably about as good of a start to West Coast Conference play as we've had during your ten years here. Just a couple of big home wins against a couple teams that you would expect to be at least middle of the pack in the WCC. Yeah, it was uh, a great start. I mean, it was it was tremendous. You know, and you you know you start you know you have a few days and you start you start. With you know, as the coaches do, you start thinking about, you know, gosh, wish we had got that one in non-conference or wish we had done that or, you know, and UC Davis, boy, we didn't really play well there. Or Weber State, we should have closed that out. You start doing the woulda, coulda, shouldas. But I think all those were learning experiences that put us in position to, to maybe hopefully play our best basketball. Uh, that's our that's our approach right now. And I think uh, I think you really saw it. Uh, I think you really saw it over over the home weekend, whatever that those days of the week were. You know, um, uh, against against like you say, two teams that uh, uh, people were really speaking highly of. You know, and um, and and to have that performance against them was was really good. 
Yeah, and it seemed like a good balance effort. You know, we mentioned Alec Wintering, well-deserved earned WCC Player of the Week because of that career high against Pepperdine and a big win, and he seemed to make so many plays. But I thought what was really impressive was just the, the, the team effort on that Monday, specifically against LMU, when Alec, quite frankly, went down early with foul trouble, and that's when there was that 23-0 to run. Uh, Jason Todd coming back from injury really seemed to provide a spark off the bench, and it was really a group effort. It wasn't necessarily relying on one or two guys to get it done. Yeah, no, that was an interesting game. Uh, you know, I was really uh, confident and sort of took the game plan approach that that we were gonna we were gonna beat them. You know, that we were gonna just we we were gonna run them and we were gonna we had what we needed to do to beat them. And then we had that stretch where we just the key to the game was taking care of the basketball. And then we don't take care of the basketball. We turn it over and we turn it over against their pressure to start with. Alec has a couple turnovers actually and. Um, and, and it was, it was, it was, got, it was going and that we had the media timeout coming and, uh, you know, you could just sense the whole child center asking when the coach will see you call a timeout, you know, you, and, and I, and I just, I stuck to my guns and maybe a little bit, you know, hindsight's 2020, but maybe I was a little thick headed, but I, I, I was, I was counting on us being deeper and I was counting on us being able to run them and we kept running them and they were tired and, and big Ray, I, you know, I was worried about big Ray Moreno. <laughs> you were out there running up and down and, um, and then we came in with a second wave of guys and just that, that group was really effective. They had a possession where they moved it around, moved it around and each guy passed up a shot or two and then Jarrell knocked down a three and they got going from there. But then Al picked up his second foul and, you're exactly right. We were able to just sort of build a lead with him on the bench, which I think is that kind of experience for a team is really valuable. Uh, as you saw against Pepperdine, he's pretty key for us, but to have that experience where we know we can still play some good basketball without him uh, was good. Yeah, I thought that was a good midseason learning opportunity and really passed with flying colors just to be able to play in a crucial spot in a big game without him. And I think the other byproduct of that, four games in six days, um, getting that big blowout win on Monday allowed you to rest some guys. Nobody played more than 24 minutes in the team. You wouldn't have lo- known the way that they came out and played against Pepperdine that that was for- the fourth game in six days. No, you know, and, and the depth has been something, and, you know, uh, we'd shortened the bench a little bit after the Idaho State game where we felt like it had, you know, the subs and stuff. Maybe we were out thinking ourselves a little bit. We tried to tighten things up, but then Jason Todd was out so um, uh, for that week, and so then we that, that kind of took care of itself a little bit. And then we get Jason back, which, is, like you said, was a big boost. And uh, Max comes in, and uh, Livingston comes in and gives us some good minutes. And um, so it was a, it was a, it was a good it was a good team win um, all the way around. But you're right and to to say that you know I just I just kept ignoring the fact that it was four games in, in six <laughs> nights. I mean I was feeling tired. We were rolling from game to game, and um, uh, and and just. Uh, but we didn't talk about it. You know, we didn't we didn't give them that excuse, and they weren't looking for it. And so we were able to play some good basketball. Listen to the Portland Pilots co Portland Pilots coaches show with Coach Rev. And we'll take our first break. We'll come back with Coach Rev. Talk a little bit about the upcoming opponents and uh, how the Pilots have prepared over this little bit of a break. Uh, you're listening to again the Portland Pilots coaches show on nine ten ESPN Portland. You're listening to Portland Pilots Basketball with Coach Eric Reveno on 910 ESPN Portland. Here's your host, Jason Bro. Back here in studio, Coach Reveno and the Pilots down at the University of San Francisco prepping for Thursday night's game against the San Francisco Dons, and so he's joining us remotely. We'll also have Alec Wintering and Bryce Presley join us a uh, segment away from now. Kramer Knutson, Director of Ops, and then we'll close the show with the University of Portland Athletic Director Scott Lakeham. But, Coach... Um, as we mentioned, a 2-0 and start in WCC play, you, you, you always or frequently talk about kind of the non-conference being the preparation for the conference season, which is the second season, then the postseason, the third season. Um, a lot of positives coming out of the LMU and Pepperdine game, but was there anything that you went back on and said, okay, we can tighten this up or we need to address this before we play USF on Thursday? Um, you know, I felt like... Uh, I, I, you know, all season long, I felt like we've been learning lessons and, and in the non-conference and getting better. You know, and and to be honest, I, there was at times where it was just about managing my expectations with a lot of new faces, um, running new offensive schemes, uh, defensively changing things up more. 
Um, there was times I had to be honest, I had to remind myself to be patient a little bit. And I think it was coming together, you know, nicely. Um, and now I feel like, I, I feel like, you know, in December, I felt like we were in a race against time. Um, and I, I still kind of feel that way, you know, do, are we, you know, were, you know, were we good enough to protect home court first two games against sort of the middle of the conference level teams? Yes. So that feels really good. And then now we're, are we good enough where we need to be to, to go on the road and, 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 and get some wins on the road? You know, we, we got to keep, you know, we got to keep getting better and off defensively rebounding the ball. We're not rebounding at, at the at the level we need to, we're, 260th or something in the country in defensive rebounding. We're second in the conference after the first week, so we did a good job last week. But we got to do better defensive rebounding, point of attack defense. Offensively, I still, you know, we shot 60% effective field goal both those last two games. Uh, we still need to work and prepare for when we're not shooting the ball well. So and I, these are all like I think we're getting there in terms of moving the ball on passes and stuff. So I, I'm not sure I'm answering your question, but just the idea that that that, that we're getting there. Um, and the guys are in a really good place, like you said, coming off the break uh, in terms of their energy and excitement and commitment to what we're doing. Uh, I feel like this could be a team that keeps improving. Well, and you mentioned defense and rebounding, and I know early in the year that was something that jumped out both from a coaching perspective, but also just looking at the sheer numbers where those were areas we, you know, the, the pilots were lacking. And it seems like as we pull up like the last five games and look in recent games and specifically the last two games, those numbers are starting to balance out. Uh, the defensive, you know, defensive field goal percentage has been pretty good. Uh, the rebounding rate over the last seven or eight games, I think you guys have a positive margin. So, um, um, is that just a level of comfort integrating new guys and kind of getting used to the physicality and getting used to play with each other, or what do you attribute that to? Yeah, yeah I don't, you know, I simply put, I, I think it just it was coaching. I think we probably <laughs> didn't emphasize it enough. We didn't, we, we thought we were okay there, or we weren't, you know, because they're good kids like this that are trying hard to do what you ask. They, they do what you emphasize, and, and in hindsight, we probably weren't emphasizing it enough. Same with something like, you know, our Gabe and Jarrell um, finishing around the basket. You know, we spent a lot of time working. I was, we were nervous about their perimeter play with the change in the offensive scheme. We're worried about their perimeter play and, and then shooting the ball. So we spent a lot of time working on that. But then all of a sudden we realized we had – so those are just coaching things in terms of – a lot of it has to do with, the, you know, they got tough academic schedules and practice time sometimes limited and you're working on a lot of different things. But – um, so once those rebounding, so once the early results start coming in on the rebound, we just start getting back to basics. I think uh, when I think of players, you know, we don't have a lot of um, uh, great, you know, guys that are just getting huge numbers. You know, Colin Russell's still learning and flying around and does what he can. And um, but the, in terms of individuals, Bryce has been really key for us. I mean, just um, watching the recent games, the amount of rebounding he's doing compared to last year has been really tremendous. A couple questions. First one uh, submitted by David Blair. He says, really likes the way the team's playing, particularly everyone's involved in the offense. Um, he brings up a specific player, and he asks about Rashad and, and what Rashad Jackson brings to the team. You know, he brings a level of athleticism uh, and defensive ability on the ball that, that maybe has the potential that other guys don't. And um, he's doing really well for his freshman year and just trying to find those opportunities to bring him along um, and increase his comfort level, uh, rebounding the ball, getting the ball, defending. Uh, he can really do that. He can shoot the ball too a little bit and, uh, more of a scorer than a shooter, but, uh, he, that'll come as well. So he's doing really, uh, well for his freshman year. And with Jason out, there's a good opportunity to try to, to bring him along. Another question from Twitter. Our good friend Jason Quick asks, which players shown the most improvement from last season, coach? You know, I'm, I'm proud of a lot of guys' improvement. I, I think, you know, it's a, between Alec and Bryce, to be honest, that, you know, they're the ones that were, you know, you say how critical Alec was and, and Jason last year following us closely, you know, probably say about Alec. I would say Alec and Bryce, I, I, try to, I hate to cop out and have two. <laughs> Alec, I'd say Alec Wintering because of his leadership and his running of the team and doing more things. And I was just talking to him before practice, the stuff behind the scenes. He's better on the court as well. Um, you know, and Jason Todd's, but every, everyone's improved a little bit. Everyone's getting better. But I, I'd say Alec, just in terms of expanding without outside his realm of his normal, what he was doing before, um, that, that maybe isn't as uh, apparent to everybody, but is really apparent and appreciated to, to me and his teammates. 
And then uh, quickly before we let you go, I wanted to get your thoughts on the upcoming opponents. Uh, this is always a tough place to go and play USF in Santa Clara. Have gotten some wins there before, but but as you know, West Coast Conference road games are always a challenge. Uh, what can Pilot fans expect Thursday and Saturday? You know, um, USF is uh, uh, actually they rebound the ball really well. Uh, they got some very good guard play. I haven't spent a lot of time. Coach Miss Johnson, he's actually – uh, recruiting today, uh, but he's he's a scout. He's prepared. He sent me some stuff. I've looked at a little bit, um, but but they they are tough to play. Both coaches are doing a really good job. Um, uh, and Santa Clara, you know, they've had the, they're taking their lumps this year, but boy, you know, they've had a couple years like this where they've, they've had some struggles. But they always play hard. They always scare the heck out of you because they're they're really well prepared for. Um, uh, for what you do, and they force you to go to Plan B, and that's the thing about WCC play, and even on the road, I guess maybe even more so, is that teams teams are going to be well prepared. Um, and we saw with LMU on some of the stuff we were doing defensively; they were really well prepared for it. Pepperdine, same thing, and so you've got to be ready each time. All right, Coach, we'll let you go. We'll take our next break. Good luck. We'll see you down at San Francisco again, uh, playing the San Francisco Dons 5 o'clock on New Year's Eve. We'll see you down there. Uh, Good luck. Get the guys ready to practice today. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Coach. We'll take another break. We'll come back. We'll talk with Alec Wintering and Bryce Presley, get a few minutes with each of Portland's starting backcourt, um, get their thoughts on last weekend, and looking ahead to the USF Dons and Santa Clara Broncos. You're listening to the Portland Pilots Coaches Show on 910 ESPN Portland. It's time for a deep dive on University of Portland basketball. The inside story on the Pilots. You're listening to Portland Pilots Basketball with Coach Eric Reveneau on 910 ESPN Portland. Here again is Jason Bro. Back here in studio, the Intercom Studios up in Portland. Jason Bro bringing you live the Portland Pilots Coaches Show. Uh, we had Coach Reveno on for a couple segments, but as we mentioned, the pilots are actually in practice right now down at War Memorial Gym, so we're doing a little bit of a medley, grabbing a few different people each time, and we'll bring on Alec Wintering, Portland's junior point guard right now, to join us. And um, Exciting news for Alec, earned WCC Player of the Week honors announced this morning by the West Coast Conference. So, uh, Alec, uh, congratulations and uh, on a great week last week, and uh, you know, what, what are your thoughts about winning that honor? Uh, I think, you know, it was just a great honor to have. I think we did a good job of winning games. You know, it was a good a good weekend, a good week. We got, we're got 2-0 now in the conference, so just want to build on that. Yeah, you know, the last five games, you guys have won four out of your last five games, and the one loss was, you know, in overtime on kind of a circus shot by Weber State. So it seems like this team is kind of coming into their own and against some good teams. Sacramento State had been playing well uh, and then starting off against uh, WCC opponents LMU and Pepperdine. What do you think has been the difference in these last four or five games where you guys have kind of put it together? I think it's getting more comfortable with playing with each other, you know, being able to know the rotations better, know the offense better, just be able to move thing, move through things more fluidly, you know, just transition everything. Defensively, I think we've been doing a good job as well, just doing a good job of playing with energy throughout the whole game. And, and then individually for you, I mean, obviously a career scoring night, 34 points against Pepperdine. It seems like this year, and we, we talked a little bit with Coach Rev about it during the season, but y- you kind of know that, you know, this is your team, this is Bryce's team. You guys are the ones that have been there, three-year starters. It kind of runs through you. You seem to know when to switch it on in, in terms of looking to be more aggressive to score the basketball this year. And, and I think when Pepperdine, every time Pepperdine made a run in the second half and got it down to six, it seemed like you were hitting a three, you were making a layup. Is that something that's been a conscious thing that you've noticed this year in terms of when you need to be more aggressive? Definitely. You know, like you said, it's uh, me and Bryce's team, we want to take control of it. So, you know, whatever we can do to help us get wins, I think we're both conscious of doing whatever it takes. So with me the other night, it was scoring. So I was able to, you know, get in the lane, finish, or not down a shot when it was when it was needed. And then you guys obviously go into the holidays feeling really good. I know your mom was there uh, for the Pepperdine game, and, and that probably had to feel good just to go into a well-deserved break after playing four games in six days, get a little bit of a break for Christmas. Uh, what would you do with your time off? I just spent time with my mom. She was in Portland for a couple of days, so hung out with her, got some food, you know, just spent time with her. It's been a while since I saw her, so I was just kind of laying low, and then I just got a couple shots up, so 
Nice. Always in the gym. That, that's that's no surprise. And, and then, the, so the team all gathering down there. I know Drell was uh, dealing with a little bit of flight issues getting in from New York, but he's joining. You guys are practicing tonight down in San Francisco. The ability to get down there and not really have to worry with schools, that's in the rear view until you come back for second semester. Um, this is a big weekend, isn't it? You know, two, two winnable games on the road, a chance to get yourselves out to a really good conference start. Um, what are you looking forward to for these next two games, having gone and played at Santa Clara and San Francisco a, a couple times already? in your career i think just now growing off of our our 2-0 start you know like you said they're both winnable games we gotta be able to come out and bring energy like i said and you know just keep building off of what we're doing right now all right Al, i know you got to get back to practice we'll let you go round up those guys and, and we'll let you turn it over to bryce so thanks again for joining us alec appreciate it all right, so Alec Wintering, as we mentioned, coming off a career-high 34 points against Pepperdine, uh, leading the Pilots to a 2-0 start in West Coast Conference play. Alec was named the West Coast Conference Player of the Week, the first pilot this year to get that after averaging 21 points a game. And I believe he's given the phone, hopefully, over to Bryce Presley. Bryce, are you there yet? Still waiting on Bryce. Okay. Well, we might take one break. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll grab Bryce Presley for a quick segment and uh, get his thoughts on uh, the 2-0 start for West Coast Conference play. You're listening to the Portland Pilots Coaches Show on 910 ESPN Portland. You're listening to Portland Pilots Basketball with Coach Eric Reveno on 910 ESPN Portland. Here's your host, Jason Bro. Back here in studio, Jason Bro from the Intercom Studios in Portland, uh, joined by a, a gaggle of guests here. First, we had Coach Rev, and then uh, WCC Player of the Week, Alec Wintering. Now joined by senior guard Bryce Presley. Bryce, three-year starter. And Bryce, thanks for taking some time out of practice. I know you're eager to get back in there and, and with the guys, but um, this is an exciting start to West Coast Conference play for the Pilots. 2-0, and you guys have won four out of your last five. Things seem to be going in a really good direction. What's it feel like for the, for the team inside the locker room where you guys are at right now? Um, we're, I mean, we're feeling really good. Um... Like you said, four out of five wins. Um, yeah, I mean, the team's really clicking. We're all getting along really well, and, and we're just playing well as a team. We've got a question from Twitter uh, for Coach Rev, but we'll let you put the coach's hat on. We asked him this earlier as well from Grant Ainsworth. What's one thing that the team needs to improve on the most going forward this season, in your opinion? Um, just our overall defense. Um, we're getting driven point of attack way too much. Um, yeah, it, we're having a tough time keeping guys in front of us, and we really need to clean that up if we want to continue to get continue to get these wins. You individually, uh, we mentioned Alec getting Player of the Week. Uh, you, you probably could have made a case for it as well. Twenty five points against LMU, eight for fifteen from the field. Followed that up with another solid game, fifteen points against Pepperdine. You're shooting forty nine percent from the three point line, just continuing to stroke it. Um, do you feel like you're in one of those zones right now where you're kind of kicking a beach ball into the ocean when it comes to shooting? <laughs> yeah, um, you know, got to go home and got got some good advice from my dad. She said, keep shooting. And, <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> once I see one go in, I, I know that the next one, the next one's going in, the next one's going in. I don't know. I, I just feel really good right now. Yeah, I, I talked to Alec about this, too, and I, and I thought and with Coach Reveno, we mentioned it, one of the biggest things about that LMU game was the, the lack of reliance on Alec to maybe do too much in that game. He got in foul trouble, and then you guys rattled off a 23-0 run. You come up big with 25 points. Um, in, in some ways, I, I think sometimes there might be a little too much reliant offensively on, on Alec. How important was that for you guys to make that run against a good opponent and, and come out with a win with Alec battling some early foul trouble? Um, it was huge. I mean, we know we have different guys that can ste- step up and make big plays. And, I mean, yeah, we rely on Alec a lot to do a lot of the driving and attacking and, and getting fouled and getting to the free throw line. But um, we showed in the LMU game that, that we have a lot of guys that can step up and make big plays. Teams that shoot the ball generally have a chance just about any game, and this is definitely you can qualify the, this Portland Pilots team as a roster of guys who can shoot it. We've seen in the last couple of weeks, you know, Max Livingston come off, you know, hasn't played very much, but knocks down a few big three pointers. Jason Todd coming back from injury can stroke it. Jazz Johnson can stroke it. Um, that's obviously a strength, but I think one of the things we were talking with Coach about that was almost more important, and you mentioned it was defense and rebounding over the last seven or eight games um, has been pretty much night and day from the first seven or eight games what's from your perspective been part of the reason for that transformation and improvement for you guys uh, in defense and rebounding well we drill it in practice so 
I mean, it, it all starts with practice. We that that's what we work on, and in order to improve in any aspect, you have to practice it. And I mean, coach gets on us about our, our defensive rebounding. We're we're kind of under undersized, so I mean, um, we really have to work a lot harder than other teams at those two aspects. And I mean, I think I think we're getting much much better than than where we were at the beginning of the season. Joined by Bryce Presley, senior guard for the Pilots here on the Portland Pilots Coaches Show. And Bryce, just a couple more quick questions before we let you get back to practice down at War Memorial Gym. And you've now had a chance, this is your fourth year going up and down the West Coast Conference, all the various um, home facilities for your WCC competition. War Memorial Gym is kind of one of those, when you look up into the rafters, you're like, okay, national championships, Bill Russell jersey and everything. Um, do, do, Do you feel that at all when you walk into like the history of a place like that? Or is there a specific place in the conference or somewhere else where you've played? that uh, really jumped out to you as a really impressive place to be in play? Um, yeah, here, I mean, definitely the history is, is ridiculous. I mean, so many great players have come through here, gone under the NBA, and I mean, yeah, like you said, there's so much history here. Um, another one of those, obviously, Gonzaga. Mm-hmm. Uh, love playing there. Just knowing how many great players have stepped on that court, it's it's. It's definitely a treat to be able to play in such a great conference with so many great teams with such great history. And then lastly, it's it seems like you know the players that are involved really know how hard it is to win road games. And, and then when you throw the, the WCC road game in there, it seems like it's even that much more difficult with familiarity and good coaches and players know each other and everything. Just ex- try to explain to fans, why is it that it's so difficult to get road games? doesn't matter who you're playing, if it's the best or worst team in the conference. It just seems like it's a grind every time when you go on the road in this league, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, this league has so many every, – every team is good. Um, so at any night, anybody could be anyone and to come up with road victories is incredibly difficult. And if you get a few, you're sitting pretty for, for WCC play at the end of the year. All right, Bryce Presley. Thanks so much. We'll let you get back to practice. Make sure all those guys are doing what they're supposed to be doing in that gym. And we'll see you on Thursday night. Good luck, Bryce. Awesome. Thank you. All right, we'll take our final break. We'll come back and have some quick chats with uh, Director of Basketball Operations, Kramer Knutson, and then we'll have Scott Lakeham on for the final segment. You're listening to the Portland Pilots Coaches Show on 910 ESPN Portland. You're listening to Portland Pilots Basketball with Coach Eric Reveno on 910 ESPN Portland. Here's your host, Jason Bro. Welcome back to the Portland Pilots Coaches Show. We'll be joined shortly by Kramer Knutson, Director of Basketball Operations, former Portland Pilots Center, who was uh, one of the all-time leaders in game started, blocked shots, uh, had a career over professionally in Europe. We'll talk to Kramer about that. But a reminder, fans, a couple big West Coast Conference games coming up. Uh, San Francisco, 5 p.m. on Thursday, New Year's Eve, and then at Santa Clara, 1 o'clock. That's the WCC Game of the Week. It will be televised up here regionally on Route Sports Northwest, 1 o'clock start on Saturday afternoon. Good opportunity for the Pilots to try to get a couple more wins um, as we're waiting for Kramer to call back in here one second. Uh, The Pilots coming off of two impressive home wins. uh, 27 point home win over the LMU Lions and then coming back with a wire to wire win against the Pepperdine Waves. Portland now 2 and 0, 8 and 7 overall and um trying to carry that momentum of winning four out of their last five. As Kramer I believe says the the phone is ringing. We're going to try to patch him through and see if we can get Kramer on the line. Coach Reveno joined us earlier and as he mentioned um we're kind of satellite here the team down in San Francisco, they went down to San Francisco Bay Area early to practice and get a few games, get a few days of practice in, get acclimated to the San Francisco home court. Jarrell Marshall was a little bit late um, as some of his flights coming back from New York were delayed, but it sounds like he's on his way to War Memorial Gym as we speak and the rest of the team there as well. So a good opportunity for the pilots to get acclimated into San Francisco and, uh, as we mentioned, a crucial two-game road swing down in the Bay Area coming up for the pilots. 
Other WCC games, Portland's travel partner Gonzaga will, of course, be flip-flopping and playing against San- Santa Clara on Thursday night. And then they will get the San Francisco Dons on Saturday. Both those games, the San Francisco game, will be nationally televised on ESPNU. Other WCC games that are coming up this week as we're trying to connect Kramer. San Diego will be at Pacific BYU at St. Mary's. And then uh, the home te- the uh, travel partners, LMU and Pepperdine, will play each other Saturday afternoon. And we are now joined by Kramer Knutson. Kramer, are you there? Yes. Okay, sorry. Sorry we lost you there for a little bit. We are reconnected. But, uh, Kramer, we gave a little bit of your, your background, your profile. As we mentioned, a four-year starter, starting center with the Pilots during one of the best stretches in University of Portland history. And let's go back and start there. What was that like, you know, those four years you had on the bluff, um, both in terms of socially, academically, but also uh, getting to know who I know are still a lot of lifelong friends of yours on the basketball team? Yeah, no, we had a, a great group of guys who, who really were a team. And uh, even I landed in uh, San Francisco today, and uh, I got a text from Ethan Niedermeyer, one of my teammates, who uh, is from the Bay Area, and he, he wants to meet up for dinner sometime while I'm here. And we really had guys that cared for each other and, and, and played for the played for the team for sure. Yeah, and it's always impressive. I know when we have the summer reunions and play some alumni games, it seems like that core group, you know, whether it be Robin Smelders from Europe or Taishi Ito's made a couple, Jason Hannibal from, you know, Toronto, that that group really seems to like to have the opportunity to get back together and reminisce. Yeah, there's not one guy from those teams during my time at the University of Portland that we don't we don't keep in touch in some form, either through social media or uh, meeting up in the summer or what have you, we uh, we really uh, we really bonded, and we those those guys we uh, we have something that will last a lifetime. Joined now by Kramer Knutson, current director of basketball operations for the University of Portland, former pilot. And uh, Kramer, tell us a little bit about your professional career. Tell the fans a little bit about it that might be curious about that opportunity to go and play in Europe, kind of your path and what that experience was like for you. No, it was awesome. I uh, I. I played four years at UP, and then uh, my first year out of college, I went. I played uh, right in Switzerland and uh, lived on Lake Geneva. Had some great experiences there, and after that year was done, I played well. I had the chance to go play in Romania, which is about the, the polar opposite of playing in Switzerland, and <laughs> had a, a great experience there. And then um, the last two years, I played in uh, London, England, where uh, I met my, uh, my fiancé, who is now my wife, so I met her over there, and uh, so yeah, I would say that was that was a great experience as well. I uh, I got to to live during um, live a whole year there. I got to experience all their traditions, all their holidays, all their seasons, what have you, and it was it was a really good experience. Yeah, you kind of just glossed over and made a quick mention of the whole getting married part. So f- first of all, congratulations <laughs> on behalf of all the pilot fans. I know you got married Christmas Eve, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, I uh, I flew home uh, after the game, after the Pepperdine game. My flight was in the morning at about 5 a.m., and I hadn't seen my fiancé for three months, and we were reunited on Christmas Eve, and, and we got uh, we got it done that night and uh, got married at the courthouse, and all our paperwork is behind us, so we're good to go. <laughs> so now it's just the honeymoon planning. <laughs> yeah, now uh, I'm leaving that up to her or else I can get in trouble with that, but yeah, we're... Uh, I'll leave that to her. Well, congratulations, and also congratulations on, on this opportunity to come back to the University of Portland. I know just working around with the admin staff and everything, it's been uh, great to have you there. You're following in some good footsteps of some other great director of basketball operations folks. And, and what's your plan professionally? And this is kind of the first step a lot of a lot of former players make in terms of um, getting a foot in the door to coach. Is that kind of your path that you're looking to follow down? No, yeah, definitely. I mean, doing my job right now, it's I'm, I'm pretty much doing all the stuff that Coach Red would have to do. Just I'm not on the court coaching the guys. I just I do everything. I, I I'm planning. I'm thinking ahead. I'm I'm making sure the guys are taken care of and, and the guys are taking care of their business. And it's uh it's been a great experience to get me uh get me ready for what I really want to do is is coaching. 
And, and it seems like it's funny. I know we talk a lot, and, and that's kind of a, a position that lacks a lot of glory, but it's a very important position. Um, can you kind of go back to as a player and maybe have a different perspective on what the staff does and how they manage and what everything goes on to, to make it so easy on the players? Do you have a greater appreciation for that now, I imagine? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. I uh, When I was a player, I'd just go in for meals or whatever, and the food would just be there, and I wouldn't really think about it or – you know, you, you show up to your gym, you show up to the, the locker room, and there's shoes in there, and there's um, you know jerseys, uniforms, all this stuff that you know it just it just appears and you don't have to think about. It. But that's what I do in my job is you got to plan ahead and make sure that the guys have everything they need to to be put in this, this situation to be successful. Well, most importantly, it sounds like everybody is in San Francisco, so I, I think you did a pretty good job. Uh, holiday travel can be a disaster, I know. So uh, I guess the last question is, is everything set for the pilots to get a win on Thursday? Oh, most definitely. We, uh, you know, the coaching staff, we're working hard. The players are working hard, and, and we're doing everything in our power to, you know, get two wins for this road trip and, and get out of here 4-0. Uh, and all right, Kramer, I know Coach is probably looking over, waiting for you to come back in and to finish out the practice, so we'll let you go. Thanks again for helping us out, coordinating everything down in San Francisco, and we will see you down there Wednesday night and uh, hopefully getting a win for the Pilots on Thursday. Perfect. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Kramer. We'll take our okay. final break. When we come back, we'll bring on University of Portland Athletic Director Scott Lakeham to close out this episode of the Portland Pilots Coaches Show. <laughs> You're listening to Portland Pilots Basketball with Coach Eric Reveno on 910 ESPN Portland. Here's your host, Jason Bro. Back here for the Portland Pilots Coaches Show. We've had a, a wonderful lineup of guests from Coach Reveno for the first couple segments. Alec Wintering, the reigning WCC Player of the Week. Senior Captain Bryce Presley. Newly married Director of Basketball Operations, Kramer Knutson. And we'll close out the show with uh, University of Portland Athletic Director Scott Lakeham. Scott, how was your Christmas? Yeah, very nice. Good, quiet time with the family, and it sounds like the segments are getting progressively worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way of looking at it. We just thought we'd, you know, by the, we figured by the last segment everyone had tuned out anyway, so we'll bring you on here and chat with you. <laughs> I, I know my role. <laughs> Wanted to hit a few things, though, basketball-related that, that are really exciting. And, and from someone who was born and raised in the Northwest, the Far West Classic was, uh, it, it was great to see that brought back, and I know you had a big hand in that along with Oregon State on kind of re-energizing and bringing it in its current form. Can you just kind of unpack and talk about how that came to be and, and then on the back end of it, um, how you thought it went and, and what the future of that event might be with Portland involved? Well, to, to give credit where credit is due, uh, Mark Masseri, who's one of the deputy ADs at Oregon State, really you know, working with his folks was the, the brainchild to bring that tournament back together this year. Uh, the Moda Center it was a very willing partner. They love hosting college basketball, Chris Oxley and his staff. And from a logistics standpoint, Mark, somebody I knew from 20, 20 years ago when I was in school, um, they were looking for a partner to, to help run the event, and I, I felt it was a great opportunity both for the school and our basketball program from a branding standpoint. I think the tournament went you know, as well as it could have physically gone, to be honest, considering we, you know, we had to find opponents to play within seven or eight months, and you know, both staffs, pitched in it's a lot of work hosting an event somewhere but but your own home gym and i i thought it went well i thought the crowds were you know frankly better than we expected you know for us having three or four thousand people to watch us play cal state fullerton on a uh saturday night uh that number just realistically at this point where we are wouldn't happen in the child center so we were we were pleased on all levels um now we've got to put our heads together and and see where it goes from here uh, what the format is, you know, we've had some talks with Oregon State about what scheduling and opponents look like, and we'll we'll put our heads back together um, to see if it's it's something we can we can do again next year. Uh, if it if it fits for us, which at this point in all discussions it does, it's something we'd love to do again uh, on that same weekend. Uh, I know Oregon State wants to play more games in the Portland metro area, so for the two of us, I think it, it makes a lot of sense. 
you know, as part of that, scheduling, basketball scheduling is so important now and such a challenge, and I know you're heavily involved with that along with our basketball coaching staff, and um, there's exciting announcement about uh, the Wooden, Wooden Legacy Classic, and there's some other future MTEs that are involved in, in 2017, the big Nike tournament that's coming to town in Portland. Um, just talk about kind of what the next few years look like for the University of Portland men's basketball team in terms of those pre-scheduled events. We have a, a real nice you know, sort of four-year package in front of us, you know, with the Far West Classic now behind us. But, Jason, we can play in a multi-team event every year, which is called an MTE. They're certified by the NCAA. If you do not play in an MTE, you can play 29 games per schedule rule. If you play in one, it's 31 games. So, obviously, all of us want to play um, those two extra games for revenue and a variety of other reasons. Um, So, our MTE uh, next year in 2016 – uh, we were originally scheduled to go to the Great Alaska Shootout, um, but have ended up deferring that and received an invitation to the ESPN Wooden Legacy. You mentioned in Anaheim. Um, Butler was a, a late dropout, as I understand it, and uh, they had a spot and gave us a call. So it's uh, UCLA, Texas A&M, Nebraska, Virginia Tech, Dayton, and a, and a couple others. Uh, that'll be a great opportunity for us. You referred to 2017, which is a – a tribute to, to Phil Knight and Nike at uh, Mr. Knight's 80th birthday party. Um, that will be a 16-team tournament and two 18 brackets at the Moda Center and the Coliseum. And you and I have talked about it. I think it's probably the greatest tournament in college basketball history, at least the way it looks on paper. You know, just with, you say Kentucky, Duke, North Carolina, I think that gets people's attention. Uh, you throw in Michigan State. You throw in Florida and Ohio State and others. It's a, it's an impressive, impressive field, and we're we're blessed to be a part of that. Uh, it maps out that we're looking to go to the Alaska Shootout now in 18, and then uh, play in the the Diamond Head uh, ESPN tournament in Hawaii over Christmas in 19. Yeah, that uh, phenomenal lineup coming ahead. I'm excited to travel to some of those places as well. But as you, the the ability and draw of being in a market like Portland, it gives the pilots in the University of Portland and, and you from a business perspective an unbelievable opportunity that many mid-majors don't have. And I think the classic example is this Nike tournament. I mean, that's as we've discussed, that 16-team grouping is better than anything that you will get even in an NCAA tournament opening round or opening couple rounds. That That is the elite of the elite. So to have the opportunity to be a part of that, it's got to be remarkable. I know the coaches use it from a recruiting perspective, but that just shows the strength of partnerships in the community and the strength, of, quite frankly, of the University of Portland relationship with Nike. I agree. I think maximizing your market is the most important part uh, in, in these jobs and in this profession right now. And you said we're, we're in year two of an eight-year deal with Nike, which we're very proud of, and I think that's a partnership that really, really benefits both parties. Uh, us from a branding and uniform perspective, Nike from a, an employment internship and product development standpoint, that's, that's a fantastic partnership. You know, that blends into the Nike tournament. And even, you know, you get into the sponsorship perspective, which we've talked about, and there's still room to grow, but I look at a, a portfolio with Les Schwab and U.S. Bank and Nike and uh, AAA Oregon, Idaho, and many partners that, you know, we do our sponsorships in-house because there's such a, a, a large local demand for it in the Portland marketplace, and I, I don't think that exists in a lot of cities. Yeah, Director of Sponsorship Duncan Strang has done a nice job over the last few years uh, continuing to build out that portfolio. Joined on the Portland Pilots Coaches Show by University of Portland Athletic Director Scott Lakeham. We have him for a few more minutes, Scott. And um, I, I want, kind of going back to that community theme as we got a Twitter question, you know, asking about what improvements you'd like to see um, for the home court atmosphere and student involvement. And taking this back to the Pepperdine game, I know there was a big marketing push with getting some kids in the stadium for a national TV game. Um, and a good crowd showed up on it for Wednesday, the 23rd before Christmas. Is that something that, that the pilots can build off of going into this conference, especially coming off a couple big wins? I sure hope so. I mean, that, that was one of those, when you look at the conference schedule and you look at Loyola Marymount and Pepperdine on a Monday and Wednesday, and as you mentioned, Pepperdine on uh, ESPN two days before Christmas, that's one of those, you know, how do you, how do you make lemonade when you're, when you're handed lemons? And I think, you know, the Loyola crowd was you know, not what we would have liked it to have been, but we had enough folks that we hadn't seen in the Child Center before and, and you know, gave us some hope. And I thought Wednesday uh, our marketing team and our external relations staff did a great job. We had a group on out there. We had some local basketball partnerships. I think for us to get not just 
not just the bodies, because there was a, a large increase in bodies over Monday, but there just was an energy in the building that I, I really felt we hadn't felt for most home games this year. So I think from an energy standpoint, it is something we can capitalize when we're looking at you know, kids free and uh, parents half off in those situations. I think a lot of families in the PDX area are looking for good, affordable basketball options, and we know we provide that. And then can you also clarify for a lot of questions about the pre-Christmas WCC games? Is that something that's going to continue? Uh, can you clarify from your perspective and your understanding on aberration or something that we can expect in future years? Well, that was originally supposed to be something that was a multi-year deal. Uh, it is now an aberration. Um, the athletic directors uh, in the league have voted to change that. So we were supposed to start, Jason, I think league was December 20 last year. Uh, what we ended up doing was pushing it back a week. So what you'll see next year is we start after Christmas, but there will be a little bit of a different schedule that you'll remember when we had a nine-team league. Instead of you know, opening with Loyola and Pepperdine at home in the same weekend. We may have, you know, Gonzaga home on Thursday and Pepperdine on Saturday. It's going to be a little bit more jumbled than the travel partners, but it will be a nine-week schedule, which will allow us, you know, to do some things like the Far West Classic. And for me, more importantly, give our student-athletes a couple extra days off at Christmas. Great. All right. Scott Lakeham, we'll let you go. Thank you so much for joining us on this last segment. Merry Christmas to you and your family, and we'll see you soon, Scott. Same to you, Jason. Thank you. One final note um, for everyone listening, Bill Johnson, as we mentioned, there was going to be an opportunity to have a service. It has been announced. It will be Tuesday, January 5th, a memorial service honoring Bill Johnson, the late voice of the pilots, on the University of Portland campus, 4 p.m. We'll have information on portlandpilots.com tomorrow. That will be open to the public, and we'll get that information out. I know there's a lot of listeners that would love to pay their respects. So Tuesday, January 5th. 4 p.m. Bill Johnson Memorial at the University of Portland. That will do it for this episode of the Portland Pilots Coaches Show. Again, the Pilots on the road at USF on Thursday at 5 and Santa Clara Saturday at 1. Thanks for listening. This has been Portland Pilots Basketball with Coach Eric Reveno. Tonight's show was brought to you by employee-owned by Mart, by your local Les Schwab Tire Center, the Oregon College Savings Plan, by Buffalo Wild Wings, U.S. Bank, by Safeway, and by Play Smart Health Screenings from Providence Heart and Vascular Institute. Join us for University of Portland Basketball all season long on the home of the Pilots, 910 ESPN Portland.